Before we get into Black Panther, I just wanted to bring up that this episode is sponsored by Boss Play. Now, Boss Play yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is an escape room out in Oceanside, California. They have two different rooms. They have the Prohibition Ransom mm-hmm. and the Chocolate Factory. And we have been trying really yeah. hard to get them set up with a good way to bring people in, right? Getting transportation set up. We've tried blimps. We've tried submarines. Uh, and it, nothing seems to be working out very well. I think they keep saying all the all the transportation services are outdated, which is news to me. I, yeah. Who doesn't use blimps? So I tried to get out there this last uh, weekend. Yeah by hand glider yeah and there was this really long layover in phoenix and then the flight got canceled anyway so i got stuck wait so you took a hang glider from southern california i took a hang glider to phoenix california (laughs) to phoenix arizona phoenix (laughs) to go back to southern california yeah look i don't pick the flight path man that's just how it is yeah but i got a good rate it was only like seven dollars you got a hang glider guy yeah, I just had to sign a waiver ahead of time that I wouldn't sue if we crashed. He said he crashes often. Yeah. Uh, so instead of going with all this outdated technology, I was thinking since they already have mm-hmm. a chocolate factory escape room, we just need to figure out the Willy Wonka teleportation system. How do you fix the problem with us being very small by the time we get there? I think you have to use a taffy puller. I think that's what you do. You. You know, the oh, taffy hooks. So we're going to get stretched yeah. stretched out. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, it's it's going to be uncomfortable, but at least it'll be consistent. That's true. It's the real experience. Yeah. And so you'll, you'll, go, you'll show up to boss play as a tiny little person. Then you'll have to work probably extra hard because I think the puzzles are set up for just not... Wait, 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 miniature. wait. You don't get you don't get taffy stretched before you get to go in the escape room? I think you have to do it after, unfortunately. Oh. Okay. We'll, like we'll work challenge. out the kinks. <laughs> we'll work out the kinks. But I think I think Taylor, you need to test this theory this week and report back to us what happened. I think we're on to something here. I I'm not good at escape rooms though, and I might end up small forever. Boss play is super awesome. And you guys should check them out. You can find them at www.boss-play.com. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor and Alan. I seen that. Hey, Taylor. How's your mustache coming? Hey, Alan. (laughs) Oh, it's coming in quite nicely. Yeah, uh, currently too nice. over on Patreon, I am one ahead, which means if that doesn't change, you are going to be mustache man for the month of May, <sighs> month of March. Yeah, that's the, I know there's not a lot of time left. The only course left I have is I'm going to go to all the women that I work with and be like, look. It's going to get real creepy around here if you don't do something about this and just hope that that pays off and and doesn't make me look creepier than normal. Yeah. If you walked up and you told someone, look. Hey, ladies, about to get real creepy up in here. If you don't give me a dollar, things are going to get really creepy really fast. You're going to get yourself in so much Yeah, I'm going to word it exactly like that. Oh, man. Yeah, because um, I can't participate if I'm in jail. That's the, my way on out. the podcast, well, you still you still have to have the mustache. You don't get out of that. You oh, you're gonna man. have to have the mustache in jail. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do something. So the we got uh, two episodes coming out for our Patreon. Uh, so if you Give us a dollar over on Patreon. You get access to yes. all our episodes two weeks in advance, but you also get a chance to make Taylor or I pay the punishment. Uh, hopefully, you want to see Taylor with his creepy little mustache next month, which I am I'm so excited for. It's going to be the best. 
think about the alternative. If anyone knew you and your family in the 90s and early 2000s, they will remember your dad having his mustache. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's going to look exactly like that. Except the only difference is my dad had one of those 90s mullets. I don't know if you remember them. It wasn't like a full on like long hair mullet, but it was like I f- where you didn't shave the back of your neck. And the hair would like flip over <laughs> your shirt collar. You know what I'm talking about? I, I don't remember the back of his head. <laughs> I, well, that's I, why. I feel like that's he why had you the could same never, haircut. That's why he didn't recognize him in the music man. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's right. I was only um, looking at but, like late 90s, Alan. Yeah. Uh, coming up on Patreon this week, we have Punisher. 2000, the 2004 Punisher with Thomas Jane, which is one of Taylor's favorite movies. Always. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is coming out on the 28th. That's and then for one. you normies, we got Die Hard and Home Alone coming out this week. So just on the regular Ooh, podcast. The feed. Christmas specials. The, kiss, yeah, the Christmas specials coming out mid, uh, late February. Because we, yes, we really time. know how to plan. <laughs> Yeah, we've got this one. Because I don't even think we talked but, uh, about those episodes around Christmas. We did. It was like two weeks before it? Christmas. Yeah. Ah. Um, but we, you saw Get uh, not Get Out, uh, Black Panther. Get Up. Am I, am I a racist? I, Is that what we just found out? I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> it does have the same guy in it. That's true. So I got that going for me. What did you think of uh, Black Panther? I liked Black Panther. I know that you didn't, and I could tell the moment that I knew I liked it was the moment I knew that you didn't. <laughs> well, it turns out I'm racist, so I I, I thought um, there was I mean, other don't, reasons don't get why me I didn't wrong. like it. But. Yeah, it wasn't like the best, but I thought it did a lot of good things, and... Yep, I liked it. <laughs> so what was the moment that you realized that I wasn't going to like it? Um, Probably about halfway through when I was like, I, I dig this. And then I was like, Alan probably is going to hate this movie for no reason <laughs> other than I like it. <laughs> um, So why didn't you like okay, it? Okay, so before I get into why I didn't like it, I'll say what I do like about it. I think it is super awesome that it has a, you know, a majority black cast, right? Like that is a huge cultural milestone. Obviously there's movies with black actors in it and stuff like that, that have gone on before, but this is, this is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest movies, you know, budget wise and the reach and all that stuff. Right. So it's a huge milestone. And I, I think that's awesome. My frustration is it is a just a basic movie, right? Like for how culturally significant this movie is, the movie is actually pretty boring. Like the fight scenes weren't great. You They had everything in frame, which is nice because most time when they do shaky cam, you can't see everything. But you really yeah. don't get to see the fights all that well. You can tell what's going on, but you don't really get to see it. And I I was talking with my wife about it because I watched Wonder Woman recently too. I have a big problem with um, women women and black people because I I really like uh, Iron Man and Mm Spider-Man because their powers powers don't exist, right? Right. So Iron Man, he he's shooting lasers from his hand. Spider Man is shooting webs and like doing all this stuff, and he's very um, I don't know their their powers are not grounded in reality. Where obviously Black Panther and Wonder Woman are not grounded in reality either, but they're doing hand to hand combat, and so when you right. do majority CGI fighting, it's like well no you you could have done practical fighting you could have done really intricate choreography to like showcase Mm -hmm. their abilities that would be impressive to watch you know like i I know i always go back to it but like that hallway scene in daredevil like that was so cool 
And that's what that like Black Panther should have just felt like a two hour version of that hallway scene. Like just, yeah, you know, shot. You know what I mean? Like just really choreographed and really focused on that because that's his his power. Right. Like his his power yeah. is is fighting like hand to hand. Yes. All that stuff. And it just I really felt like that was weak. And then on top of that, it was so heavily focused on CGI where almost the whole movie felt like it was shot on a soundstage. But it was like half the time, but it was done so poorly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think most of it was. But half the time it was so poorly done that you could just tell that this actor was nowhere near anything that looked like what he was standing in front of. Like when uh, the first scene when the guy from Get Out is on the mountain and he's like doing his his bobbing dance thing. Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, oh, that's cool that they added him into the movie later. Like it seemed like so like the the green screen was so apparent. It was like jarring almost. I was like, oh, this must have been like a last minute choice to like, you know, like give this guy a bit of spotlight. But then it turned out he was like a main character. I was like, oh, that's just poorly <laughs> done. Like, and I think you know part of really the issue funny, is right? that. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> um, that I think part but of the issue that, is that, that digital cameras, <laughs> that digital cameras have gotten so good that that old technology of chroma keying in backgrounds is mm-hmm. so much more apparent that there's just this weird lack of depth when you have the character standing in front of a screen like that because it so happens in justice I was thinking, league yeah oh justice league is bad about that yeah so i was thinking so i know whenever we talk about movies that you hate which is almost all of them a lot of it has to do with with stuff like that right the the animation yeah. or the cgi this and that not necessarily the story or directing and then I got me thinking, I was like, what happens if like, because you're in Thailand, like you just get like bad quality copies of the movies I've, and you don't I've actually seriously see cons- like real, real ones <laughs> and there's actually no issues with these problems that you have. <laughs> That's what I've considered when, like when I went and saw Justice League, it was so bad. I was like, yeah. I feel like I'm watching no. a bootleg copy of like the pre um, finished version, right? Like. They're oh, one. They got there. one more pass they need to do, and I was like, "Man, I feel like I'm watching that that penultimate, you know, e- edit <laughs> the, 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 the the final the one rough before draft the final. Before the, yeah, yeah. Like it, it seemed like, oh man, they've this feels like the copy they didn't touch up, but uh, apparently yeah. everyone felt no, the same that was way. just the movie. It was garbage. <laughs> so, yeah, Justice League is really bad. Um, this is, I don't think this is a bad movie. I don't think Black Panther is a bad movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's a solid five, right? Like it's not great and it's not terrible, but my frustration is one, it should be great. You know, it, it, especially for how, like I was saying, how culturally significant it is. It really should right. have been a ton of effort put into this. And that way, like, you know, to prove like, no, this is, there's, this will work. This is a good this, thing, you know. Uh, so that that should have been there. Should have been more effort, or I don't know. Maybe effort isn't the right word, but it, it the the end product should have been better. My second issue is everybody acting like it's the best movie they've ever seen because they're afraid to sound racist. This is the impression that right. I'm getting. You know, like they're giving it more credit than it deserves because it has an all black cast. And it's like, well, no, that, like, if you're the most notable thing about your movie is the cast, there's not a lot of room to stand. You do a good job. Yeah, on it being a good movie. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree. It definitely is been hyped as like the best. The from what I read, it was like supposed to be the best Marvel movie since Iron Man. And no, and I don't I, get me wrong, I liked it. Oh no! It definitely was no Iron yeah. Man. Uh, I would give this movie an eight out of ten. Okay. I would say, I do agree yeah. with the fighting, um, not necessarily with the content of fighting, but I yeah. felt like there should have been a lot more fighting. I felt like yeah, 
there just wasn't very many fight scenes, like Black Panther fight scenes. Yeah, half the fight scenes were just the the two guys fighting on the the trial the, the challenge the powers, which which I like that too. That's fine, but I want to see like legit, you know, superhero fighting. Yeah, well, like think how cool that fight scene would have been if that was much more of a practical set. You know what I mean? Like the back, because oh. the waterfall was fake yeah. and the background was fake. So you couldn't get these long shots of them fighting and it look impressive. And then yeah. you couldn't, they couldn't just set the camera up for more than one punch. Every hit would cut to the next. And it, I I think that's because the actors are not martial artists, but it, it's like this movie felt very much along the lines of it should have been a martial arts film. It was like a James Bond martial arts film. And it like, it was much more focused on the James Bond aspect, you know, which was, mm-hmm. which was cool, but it just, I don't know. Like and the fighting just was so frustrating to me and uh, it was very predictable. I don't know how you felt about it, but like the, I was like, Oh, well, I know he's going to beat him. And then when they went back and it's like, okay, well clearly he's going to lose and he's going to get kicked off the waterfall. Like all that stuff was like, and then when that happened, when he got kicked off the waterfall, it, I just was the whole time thinking, I was like, well, this is just what Taylor and I talked about. He's yeah, in we, the trailer for infinity war. He's clearly not dead. Like, obviously he's not going to die, but the, at least I don't know. Like there's no there's lasting no, injuries. No yeah. s- spinal <laughs> damage. No concussions more than like, yeah, I know it. I and as soon as that happened, I I thought the same thing. I was like, "Oh, I wonder what's next." <laughs> but but even if there wasn't a a trailer for Cap or for Infinity War, I I think the same thing. It was too early on. Yeah. Well, there there were still at that point there was still like forty minutes left. And one of the other issues, or not, it was this, this is not so much an issue I have with the movie, but I feel like the accents they were using the way you make that sound makes it really hard to emote with your face because I, I didn't feel like any of them felt came, came across very genuine when they were speaking. They seemed like they were trying really hard to talk with that accent. Um, that didn't really stand out to me, but no, I, I, that's, that's not ever something that would. Yeah. So it, Cause, it, it, you could be right. It could be really bad. I wouldn't even know. Like, so I, I lived in Africa for years. So I'm, I'm not saying like I'm a, a ling- he's the expert, <laughs> an Watch expert. Or, um, and, and it's not even like they did a bad job at doing it, but it, they did not seem genuine at speaking. Do you know what I mean? Like they, it just felt so. Yeah. I don't know. It it was so. It was just something that like stood out constantly. And what made that even worse was Michael B. Jordan speaking with an American accent. Not that he needed to have an um, an African accent for his character. Like, obviously, that makes sense. But right. the jarring switch between him or even Martin it, Freeman, like, the, the, the switch in sounds between those the American characters was always like... It, it was just kind of jarring going back and forth between I, the two. I yeah, I agree with the the Michael B. Jordan. It was it, it did stand out a lot. Um, because I felt like but, uh, um, I don't, yeah. the claw guy. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, Ulysses. I, yeah, but what's his actual name? The guy he he did uh, Smeagol and uh, Gollum. Yeah, <laughs> he he felt uh, like he fit in the world, right? Like everything established. Oh, yeah, he, for sure. He felt like authentic to it, but Martin Freeman and uh, Michael B. Jordan felt very like obviously they're outsiders and that's part of it. But when you're doing like fake accents, it, it mm-hmm. it's just it's a, a weird competition, at least for my brain. I don't know. I could be I could be a crazy person. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, none of that kind of thing ever really stands out to me. Yeah. Cause you're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one of the probably the biggest frustration I have about this movie is the opening speech, where the dad is talking to um, 
T'Challa. T'Challa. Oh, that's awful. T'Challa. Yeah. T'Challa. Where he's talking to him, talking to his son, and he's like, basically, what his speech boils down to is, we got lucky. We got this magic. uh, We're going to keep it to ourselves. And because we're going to protect ourselves because we're important and we're going to let everyone else around us suffer and we're not going to do anything to help it. Like that, obviously that's not what he said, but that was the message of what he said. And I was like, okay, well, this Mm -hmm. is clearly the entire plot of the movie. Like the moral story of this movie is going to be changing that, you know, coming, getting, it's going to take every, their whole culture and flipping that on its head. Was it like, and I, I don't know, like I, to me that felt like it really like deflated the the whole movie for me because it was like oh well that's that's what the movie is going to end with them reaching out from where they are and it, I don't know so you don't like that you don't like that you knew what the end was going to be so early on yeah cuz i mean it was the the first thing you know like as soon as the movie kicked yeah. off i was just like just there's a lot of these little things that just made it feel kind of weak. And uh, again, I, I think it's fine. I think it's just, it's a passable, you know, run of the mill superhero movie. I just, I feel like it deserved to be a lot better than what it was. Yeah. I would say one of the things that I did like that I really liked about it was that it, Although it it is part of the you know Marvel Cinematic Universe, it it definitely feels like its own standalone movie that can exist outside of that. We don't yeah. have to. You don't have to see any of those movies to understand it. You don't have anything. It's just its own movie. I mm-hmm. feel like we haven't seen one of those in a while. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Ant Man, I guess, was kind of like that. Um, although. I wonder, I mean, because obviously we've seen Civil War. I wonder what it would be like to see this first without having seen Civil War. Because they they right. don't establish a ton of Black Panther, but they do establish a lot of his motivations. You know what I mean? Like, Yes. Because they, yeah. they show a little bit of his dad dying, but they don't really explain why that happened. And so it, it, the... I do, I just wonder what it would be like to see to see the movie without that because I, I think that is a good point that you're making that this is one of the most standalone movies that they've made in a long time. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, it. I, nothing would be different had we, he not been in uh, Captain America because they pretty much showed the same footage in this movie, t- so. Yeah, but they explain it in yeah, Captain America is my point. They don't really explain. They just show it in this one. They oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. So they remind people who have seen Captain I, America what, what was going on, but I don't know how effective that would be if you didn't see Captain America is my point. Yeah, no, they might need to – they would have some – they would need some kind of explanation. Yeah. But not much. But, I don't know. You know, it's not – No, not, not much. Not a ton of uh, – Stuff they would need to do to really make this a true standalone. Um, <clears throat> what do you think? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of Michael B. Jordan, other than kind of being distracting from the world? What do you think of how he did as a villain? I thought he did good. I liked his character. People are and saying thought, he's like the best, best villain of all time for Marvel, or like at least top three. The best villain? Mm-hmm. No, no. He, I would say he's, he, he's a good villain, but also at the same time, he's, he's not, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I think his motivations were somewhat in the right direction. Yeah. Um, you know, wanting to use the power of, of Wakanda for their people he just, I think, over time, he he wanted it. Ended up him wanting to do it for. Uh, I can't. I can't <clears> think <throat> of the. I'm I'm completely blanking right now. Yeah, it was, it was just kind of a revenge plot. Like he didn't have any aspirations yeah. other than to, one kind of like 
completely change, like make Wakanda pay, but also to make the world pay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so he, he had this weird motivation. And I think, I think he, he could have done everything the same, still had his dad die, all that type of stuff. But I think instead of being the type of, I just want to watch the world burn, maybe have a little bit different, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't know. It was, he, I think he, I think Michael B. Jordan is a great actor. And I think he was somewhat underutilized in this film. Oh, um, f- for sure. And then I think Martin Freeman, Martin Freeman's character, uh, as soon as he showed up to Wakanda was like the worst character in the movie. Um, because oh, it was, really? he was just the audience at that point. They're like explaining yeah, everything to true. him to explain to the audience. And then for, he for was sake. he was also explaining everything about uh, Michael B. Jordan's character for the audience's sake. You know what I mean? Like he was just a yeah a tutorial pop up. You know, <laughs> like yeah. And uh, the, how 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 lucky that Martin Freeman knew exactly who Michael B. Jordan was. He's like, oh, he's one of ours. Like. It's just I don't know that I didn't I didn't enjoy I like Martin Freeman I think his character is good until he got to Wakanda I didn't really like him at that point. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I really did enjoy the uh, Claw character. Yes, um, I'm trying to remember that dude's name. Andy Circus. Andy Circus name. Yeah, I was sad he died. I felt like he was a really fun character. I yeah I was I was a little shocked that it was but you know what his death I thought was perfect in a way that it was very unceremonious you know he just yeah is dead like yeah. that's how I feel like not enough movies or even TV shows like do that like yeah anytime a notable character dies it has to be this big send off when that's that's not realistic you know I mean obviously we're talking about a fantasy world <laughs> in fantasy universe, but like not everyone gets to go out like that. Yeah. It's just, they're, they're just gone, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like, so I, 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 I thought I'm, that was done good. Well, I guess. Yeah. I'm sad that he died. And I'm, I think it's kind of sad that Michael B. Jordan character died, but I think it's yeah. important that they die at the same time because it actually gives weight to characters you know like having all these characters um die and just come back or fake their death and come back like that really takes away any emotional connection you can make with any characters and so as soon Uh as you really start introducing because there's no stakes people can die and will die you become much more invested in who they are and i think infinity war is really going to hit that home where they're going to just start killing well, people off. I uh, I hope so. <laughs> for for the story's sake, pretty much like how we talked about last time. Not that I want these people to die cuz I don't like them, but I think it needs to happen to for the story. It just it, it, it there's only so long you can have this many people doing this many dangerous things before someone would die. It's just that's just how it is. Yeah. So I don't know, but yeah, I, I did really enjoy uh, the claw character. I I thought his arm was kind of weird, but it looked it looked really goofy. Uh, it looked it looked silly. That's I I thought it was gonna be. I thought we were gonna find out it was it was like some stolen thing from like Stark, right? Mm. Or s- some some similar type of thing that Iron Man has. That he got his hands yeah. on the black market or something. I yeah. <laughs> um, what did you think of the the African tribes, the Wakandan tribes, all the the five different groups? Um, I like that aspect. It. Well, so th- I guess the only question I had was like, there really is no benefit to being the son. Of the king, right? If anyone can come and challenge for uh, the, the the title of Black Panther. So, from my understanding, was at the day that it changes, right? So the king 
died and then he was taken over. So on that day, every tribe has the opportunity to challenge for the kingship. And then if it's just a normal day, the other tribes cannot challenge, but royalty, so if you have royal blood, you can challenge at any point if the king is willing to accept. No, I, no, I get that. But like what I'm saying is why not just have the king die and then everyone challenge for the title? Why does it like go to the sun for like a few days until they decide if there's going to be challengers or not? Like there's no there's no real benefit to being the king's son because if he wasn't the king's son, he could have just challenged for that role anyways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, they didn't go into it more than that, but I think it's deeper than just that. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's a, a, a system to it somewhat. Like, I don't think anyone can challenge. I think your tribe has to, um, like, support you or, like, you know, like, choose you to challenge them. Right. Yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a reason. Like you, like if you were one of them, you couldn't just go up and challenge on your own. You'd have to be selected to do it. Right. Okay. But fine. I did like uh, the one guy, the uh, the mouth guy, the big, the mouth guy. Yeah, maybe <laughs> the the guy who yeah. ends up helping him. Oh, that guy. No, that's not the guy I was thinking of. I think I don't. Oh, the guy with the disc. Yeah, I like that, Is that guy what you're because. Talking? He he's got the big disc in his in his lip and in his ears, but he's always wearing like a suit that jacket. Sweet, yeah. <laughs> so that that was something I had um, uh, some questions about. Was the idea because so technology kind of dictates culture somewhat, right? Like yep. the more advanced your culture becomes, the more or the more advanced your technology becomes, the less culture you tend to hold on to. Right. Like, right. You just, you, you know, it just starts replacing things because things become more yeah, convenient you if you have. Yeah. Um, and so throughout the movie, they were very strongly held to their culture still in the Wakanda. And then, but they also were so technologically advanced. I kind of, yeah, it, it kind of bothered me somewhat at the end because that was a question that was running through my head. It's like, well, why would you still hold on to that? that culture if your technology was advancing so much and then at the end they're like oh well this the stuff that we're using is still technologically advanced like the blankets turning into shields which look so dumb i really hated yeah i didn't (laughs) i didn't care for that but like i don't know it was just it seemed it seemed kind of strange to me like well no i know what you're saying i i thought i i I liked it, it shows that like so they have these roots and these customs and, you know, having the, the big piercings and this and that. And just because they advance through technology or whatever, like they don't lose that part of them. Like it still is prevalent even in their modern time. Like they never give up on that stuff. Yeah. And so m- my question was or is – were they doing that because they just love their culture or were they doing that to blend in with the other countries surrounding them? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I like to think it's just cause they want to. And, yeah. They just appreciate their culture. Like they just, yeah, they just hold on to that. Like they don't forget where they came from or whatever. Yeah. But, it it could be to to do the blend in. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I I mean it's not really an issue. It was just one of those things that kind of stood no, out. Yeah. Um what do you think of the bald warrior girls? Uh I thought they were pretty cool. Now, one question I had was are they do they age? Cuz I think so. They definitely looked exactly the same from the 90s to present day were they the same people i th- oh boy <laughs> well i thought they were i thought but you know what <coughs> to be honest 
I don't know if I got a good look at the the first two that we see in the beginning. I thought that one of them was Michonne, and I know that she's one of them later on. Oh, but I she? could be wrong because the dad definitely ages, right? Like he's young. Oh yeah, you know, that and, was his actual the, son. Uh, what do you mean? The the character who played the the younger Black Panther in the nineties was the the actor's son. Oh no, I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. Um, um, also, yeah, no, he aged and the brother, friend aged, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, his. Oh yeah, that's something else that really bothered me. But the brother who gets killed is from This yeah. Is Us, and it drove me oh, yeah, crazy trying to figure out oh, who really? that guy was watching the movie. I was like. Oh, this guy is so familiar, but I don't, I can't place him. And I had to look it up when I got home and it finally clicked. Oh, really? But he's, uh, he's one of those guys who's like immediately recognizable. He, but he had facial hair or something, right? In this one? He, he, uh, the, yeah, he, had, he had like, he just looked. But it wasn't so much that it was not obvious, not to me. It was just slightly different enough to where I could not place him. And it, it just broke my brain. But, I kind of uh, thought he was underutilized for for kind of how big he is right yeah. now, you know, because of This Is Us and whatever. Like, I thought he could have done more. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like this character. Role, I like that story. You could have got, like, anybody. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I thought he did a good job. Did you ever watch the American Crime Story, the O.J. Simpson one? Uh no. The People versus OJ, I think it was called. No, you I should watch that. It's, I watched the fir- first episode. It's got David Schwimmer mm-hmm. in it, right? Yeah, yes. I saw the first. I I only watched the first Cuba Gooding Jr. David Schwimmer. Because he's in that also, and he does a fantastic job. Yeah, he's a good actor. He makes me oh, cry he's, yeah, he's when great. I watch This Is Us. Oh, of course. So what was um, your problem with uh, Force Whitaker? Force Whitaker, I I I I don't want to see him in things anymore. I like I think that's the point I've gotten to with him. I like in this. I in, don't want to see him in like notable things. If he wants to do regular <laughs> movies, fine. But I don't want to see him do accents anymore. I think is my biggest. I don't want to see him <laughs> do accents as the wise old black guy, like. Yeah, he. It, it, I I don't know. I just like him in this in Star Wars. Uh, he just it doesn't do a very good job in my opinion. Like, I don't think it's anything bad. Like, I don't think it's his fault. I don't know whose choices dictate what he's doing, but the characters have been just obnoxious to watch. Um, yeah, I'm with you, but the more I think about it, I don't know if there's even really a lot of Force Whitaker roles that I like, so I might not even like Force Whitaker. Um, um have you, he, have you seen Repo Men or Repo Man? No. No? He, I thought he was pretty good in that. Yeah. That's a weird movie. There's that one movie uh, that, yeah. that plays out of order from like different viewpoints. Is it called Viewpoint? With, I think it's uh, Dennis Quaid and Forrest Whitaker. And like, is you watch it from like video cameras and stuff. It's an assassination attempt. I don't know. I think he did a good job in that. I just haven't seen that in a long, long time. But yeah, I didn't that like. What what do you think of Forrest Whitaker in this? I didn't have a problem with him, but like I said, he's one of those guys to me where he's he's not a role. He's just he's Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, like he stands out. Um, so, yeah, it be, like I said, same with Star Wars. Um, I can't buy him being. I can't buy him in these franchises. I don't know. To me, to be honest, it's it's actually really hard for me to buy any notable characters that we then see notable actors as superhero. Yeah, yeah, notable actors as then to be put into like old franchises like Star Wars. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's, it's tough. To me, that's jarring because growing up, I didn't know any of these people, right? So whenever you watch a Star Wars movie, it's all unknown people. No one is recognizable. Yeah. 
And then to see someone that you know, or not know, but recognize then in that world is strange. Well, I think the the way it works, or the best way to make it work, is they need to be the main character. You need to spend enough time with that character to buy them as that character and not as the actor. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forrest Whitaker in this movie, he was in it for maybe five minutes, right? Like, wasn't in it. He didn't have a lot of screen time. And so every time he came on, it was just like, why is Forrest Whitaker doing that thing? You know, like, that's that's all it felt like. Yeah, and see, I kind of thought I was going to have the same issue, like, with Paul Rudd in Ant-Man. Um, yeah. Being that he's so notable, especially for being uh-huh. comedy that I thought it wouldn't be good, but it, it worked out. So yeah, maybe yeah. if he was like a side character, it wouldn't have worked. I don't know. It would be, it's distracting. It's distracting to have someone so famous play such a small role. Kind of like you were saying with the guy from this is us, right? Like he, it was a relatively small role that, yeah. uh, it, so it, it was more distracting than it stood out. Yeah. than being able to buy into the premise. I think especially because when I see, okay, so like I see him, I'm like, okay, so this is going to be a big role and then they're not. And then you're, you're kind of let down a little bit like, oh, I thought there was going to be more to that. Like, cause you could have like, you could have got anybody, you know, it's not like you needed some powerhouse actor who could pull off a big scene. Like he didn't do anything special. Yeah. I I felt like he's really good at emotions though. So like when he was betrayed right. by younger Forrest Whitaker, I that yeah. really came across. Like I thought he did a great job, but I, I could see how. Like I was distracted because I was trying to figure out who it was, but I could see if I would have recognized him, I would have had a hard time separating him from the other character. Like I totally get what yeah. you're saying, but uh, yeah. So, overall, Black Panther. It like if you like superhero movies, you should definitely see it. Uh, I think. In a couple months, it's going to die down all this like, this is the best movie ever. Like, I'll be shocked if it really hits anybody's like top 10 of the year, you know, unless everything else is terrible. Oh, no, it'll hit a top 10 of the year. But for the same reasons you said, because almost um, almost because you're like afraid not to. I But I think because I th- it's similar to like Wonder Woman, right? Like when Wonder Woman came out, it was so massive. But after a yeah. while, people just stopped talking about it because it's not really super notable. No. Um, and I, I think this is going to have the same effect. I think it's going to suffer the same fate. But we'll see. I don't it know. probably will. I, I don't think, like, I don't take my opinion to be, you know, everyone's opinion or even right. You know what I mean? Like, I, just because I don't think the movie's very good doesn't mean the movie's bad. But I think there are glaring weaknesses in the movie. You know, like, if you like it, you... Well, I disagree with everything you, Taylor, think. But anyone else, if they like it, I'm I'm completely on board. I can understand why and super awesome that you're excited about it. I just think it should have been better. So what would you do differently? The fight scenes? The fight scenes? Yeah. That's probably... The fight scenes are probably the biggest... Or it's the fight scenes and filming on location. You do those two things, and yeah. the movie is. I feel like much, that's always your better. biggest gripe is is practical uh, effects. Yeah, I mean, if you can tell that it's CGI, it really ruins. It's like, what's the point of watching a live action movie at this point? I could go watch a cartoon. Yeah, or I could, you know what I mean. I could go play a video game, and it's just it's really hard to get past as soon as it stands out because there's yeah. this weird. When they go from uh, a person, an actual person on the screen, cutting into a CGI character, there's this weird perspective change on the body. They get like more stretched out and things. The, the, the weight, the gravity of the body doesn't move the same anymore. And it's just like it, it, something in my brain just is like, oh, this is wrong. This isn't. It's like something happened. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. not like, oh, this is bad, but it's just like, oh, something not natural is happening right now. What's going on? And I think yeah. there's a big difference between 
a CGI jumping character versus someone on wires, right? Like this, I don't know. Like there's, I think the more practical no, I, you can I, go, I know what you're the it. more practical you can go with a live action movie is what you should do. And then yeah. uh, I think there's some small tweaks you could do to the script that would really improve it. You know, just especially mm-hmm. that beginning uh, speech. Don't make it so clear that they were protecting themselves while letting everything like maybe if the dad would have talked about, Oh, we had to shut down Wakanda from everyone else to protect yeah. the vibranium because the world wouldn't be able to handle it and leave that there and then have everyone believe that that's the right thing to do. And then when Michael B. Jordan's character shows up, it was like, okay guys, you, you did this for yourself, but you've forgotten about everyone else. Like, look at what's yeah. going on around you. You know what I mean? Then point that out. Don't point out the the negatives of the decision at the beginning. You know, like let me buy yeah, into the yeah. premise. Let me. We're gonna. Oh yeah. Let me. We'll explore that. <laughs> yeah, because they 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 did it. You know, they still did all that stuff, but they already gave it all away. And so it was just like, yeah, yeah. I think those uh, just a few changes here and there would have made this movie great. And it's just kind of disappointing that it wasn't. What did you, would you think change about anything? the armored rhinos? <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I wasn't a fan. I don't know. They, were, they just seemed goofy, but uh, they weren't bad. I liked they them. Weren't any, yeah, they weren't any worse. It, I guess it's, a, um, it's like a direct take uh, from a comic book still. Uh, like he does oh, that. It? Yeah, that, that whole sequence is like a direct adaptation from a comic book. Um, okay. But when I watched it, it felt like uh, an homage to Lord of the Rings when, uh, was it Elephants? No. What is Legolas take Oh, the, Well, that's what I was, uh, I think it is an elephant, right? That's yeah. what I was thinking. It's because, I mean, war elephants were a thing, you know, this is mm-hmm. just like a scarier version of that because they have horns. Horns, yeah. Um, but that whole fight with, uh, when the Black Panther was in it, didn't yeah. really feel very important. Like, you know, the one scene no, where it could all the better. guys with all the guys with robes are, <laughs> you know, hacking at him. He's on the ground and he's just getting hacked at, hacked at, hacked at. That felt yeah. very uh, pointless because he didn't have any other problem at any other time. You know, like he <laughs> he he's getting shot at and getting bombs blown up on them like all that other stuff and so it just felt they should have you need a show that because i assume the idea is that their weapons are vibranium as well and so it's able to cut through but you got to show the danger also you can't just show people like hacking at a camera at from his perspective you know you got to show like oh no this is actually doing damage and then it would make more sense but and that's a tiny that who cares about that I thought yeah. I thought when it wasn't Black Panther on that fight, I thought that was a pretty cool fight scene. I really like the bald uh, warriors, the, the, the women. Warrior, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I thought, thought they, they were cool. Yeah, I, I I thought their fight scenes were pretty good. Um, much I felt like they. I, were much one more thing believable. that stood out to me. Uh-huh. What's that? I was just gonna say I think I thought they were much oh, more believable uh, one fight th- scenes than <laughs> Black Panthers. <laughs> I was going to say, one thing that stood out to me about them, and you could tell it's a Disney movie, was the, the fact that no one used their spears as the actual spears, you know, to, like, stab. Mm. Everyone was, like, yeah. using them as, like, a sword, you know, and just, yeah. like, hitting people with them. No one got stabbed well, there was... or impaled, which is kind of what spears do. <laughs> there was the one scene where the he slits the one girl's throat. And no blood comes uh-huh. out, and it's like, okay, well, this, this is definitely PG thirteen. Like, there's well, if he you didn't slit hit someone's any throat, arteries. Oh, is that what happened? He just jumped over them. The, he missed it. He just missed the jugular. <laughs> she got really lucky. <laughs> so she's still alive. Well, yeah, he just did a tracheotomy. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. She can breathe better now, better than ever. 
Oh man. Um, I, but I yeah, did no, say there, I, were, there were two scenes that I thought were funny. Um, so there's the one where they're in the 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 car chase scene. Yeah. And he's he's on top of the car, and they're chasing. Uh, I think they're chasing Claw, right? At that point. Yeah. Yep. After the the nightclub. I really scene. I really hate the way they spell Claw. By the way. Just want to throw that out there. Oh, of course. Yeah, I do too. Just, it, it drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, we, we don't have to get into that because that's a whole separate podcast on how I hate well, like, how things are spelled. If I've read, if I was only reading the comics and that name came up, I would never have called him Claw. It would be like Clue, Clue, Clue. You yeah, know, like it's Clawy. Uh, Clawy. <laughs> but, anyways. <laughs> Oh, it's Ulysses Clawy. <laughs> it's one of those things where you never say it, and then you just have it in your head, and then you say it out loud, and people are like, what? Like, what is wrong with <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I used to think memes were memes, and I said it to my brother one time, and he's like, you're the dumbest person ever. <laughs> All these darn millennials. <laughs> but anyways, go ahead. Sorry. They're, so, they're chasing that Kaloui. car chase scene, Clawy. Clawway, and then uh, I believe it's the the one that uh, his sister's driving, and then like it blows up, you know, kind of like at the tail end of that scene. Yeah. And the Michonne is already standing there, and then like she kind of comes skidding in just in the pat or in the driver's seat with the steering wheel. Like the whole Uh car is gone, but that part is still like intact, and she kind of just slides into screen. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that. I was so confused by that. No. Yeah, because it was like. Well, wow, everything else is destroyed except just the car seat. Yeah. Like that seemed it seemed like I way thought it was too just some convenient. comic relief. No, it was. Oh yeah, yeah. It just wasn't um, believable. The other one being at the very end when they when he takes uh, her back to oh okay, not are they for, I'm trying to remember not what are those what's that that wasn't your what are those that wasn't your favorite part. When no, his sister, <laughs> in the beginning, it's that meme. It's that meme uh, where his, oh, he, his sister sees his sandals. And then she's like, the most important question are, what are those? And I don't even remember that. So bad. Yeah. I don't. That was at the beginning? Yeah. And then she gives him the shoes that don't make sound. Oh, the sneakers? Yeah. Oh, how do yeah, you know? I, I, <laughs> you I just completely blocked missed that. Out? <laughs> I might have. I don't. I don't remember that. But anyways, the the scene I'm talking about is they're at the, they're back at the place where their dad killed uh, their uncle or whatever, and then yeah, he, Oakland, he activates think, right? the spaceship and it. Yeah, that's okay. He activates the spaceship and it comes and all the kids like gather around it and like the first, the uh-huh. first scene they are like, oh man, we could take this thing apart and sell it. <laughs> It was like not. Hey, it's a spaceship that is <laughs> yeah. flying. You know, they're, they're well, just, that their first show. Like, let's take this. Uh, let's take it apart. It it became from invisible to visible right in front of their eyes, and the first thing they do is go and touch it. They would take yeah, off running. In, they would be terrified. Oh, of course. I just thought that part was funny. Yeah. that they're like immediately they'd want to scrap it for parts. I thought it was kind of cool, but kind of it stood out as having the two. So you had the guy from Get Out and Black Mirror, but you also had the girl from Get Out in this movie. Which girl? So his sister is a girl from Black Museum. Yeah. The the technology yeah, you girl. Said the girl from Get Out. No, I know, I know who she is. I said, I said Black Mirror. I said, nope. the, you had the guy we have from it on file. The guy from Get Out. You said and, the guy uh, from Black Get Out Mirror. and Black Mirror and the girl from Get Out. I don't think so, but anyways, I meant Black Mirror. It's it's on file, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I know what you're talking about. I I think that's kind of cool that the that Black Mirror is because Black Mirror is like is choosing a lot of great actors, and it's cool yeah. that they're oh, for sure. able to start like using right ahead you know of I mean? their their stardom. Yeah. Like they can tell someone's gonna be good. Well, I think. Also, I mean, like I think they just choose got, good people. I don't. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we I got guess Bilbo same. Baggins and uh, Martin Freeman. In the same movie. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, Black Panther. It's fine. 
If you love it, that's great. If you hate it, I understand why. If you think it's just whatever, I'm on that same boat. Yeah. Um, but we will be back I'm with you. I'm with you. soon with our next episode.